Now we are not we are, we, are, we are here, but there is a place that on the estate what most people probably might know as Kukal Estate. It was owned by Hoggins Trust for hundred years, and it is the habitat. The Maliki lived within the vicinity of the habitat, which through the estate itself. We started a project. When I say we together the Rotary Club, we started a project in 1990. The team that year was to save the planet, and as the Rotary Club, we felt that we should look for some environmental project. And we sought forestry advice. Now, Dragan is sitting there who is my conservation advisor, an advisor for the last 20 years with conservation. She suggested at the time that we should look at the Manitou in our resort. When we came and looked at the Manitou and we looked at the, the problems we had in the estate and the problems that the Manitou might be running to on the development of the land, we felt the best thing was to buy the estate. And we didn't buy the estate because we wanted to buy the estate. We buy the estate because the estate owners wanted the primary the permission to use the estate. And we got angry at the and I told I went in there and parked up my car and came back and they mash up the car. And I told Syed and not here, but Shortman was there. I said, you know what? Better we buy this estate and we could fire the workers. Yeah. Right? And we did find a way in buying the estate. In fact, what we did, I went to all the Rotary Clubs in Trinidad and talked to all the Rotarians and um, get them to pledge 100000 dollars each. With the exchange that they could use the estate, be a shareholder of the estate and be part of the estate. And we got 80 something people who were interested. I sat down with Lisa in the back there and we looked at, selected 24 people we figured out is compatible, who family friendly, who environmentally friendly, and who looking because they're buying the plan. And these 24 people buying, they are silent shareholders, and they're still are silent shareholders. And the estate at that time cost us about $6.8 million. When we went on the estate, we looked at it and we felt that, okay, they plant 20 acres of watermelon. And they were making eighty or ninety thousand dollars, and I figured out, well, if we plant two hundred acres, you know, it could be much more. And for those who know us, we planted watermelon and paid six point eight million dollars in loan on that estate. It means changing my job spec, coming and living on the estate, taking sixty something workers and planting watermelon, we reap three million pounds of watermelon per year, and we probably make a million dollars sometime profit. But we paid about three four million dollars in interest to the bank. But we paid today, the estate is free from any encumbrances. And we didn't stop at the estate alone. Yeah. But we bought thousands of acres of other land. Not only the 600 acres there, but we bought thousands of other acres with the same thing, are keeping it for wildlife and for nature and for conservation. And this was all locally done. I mean, I am the slave driver, but I, I feel guilty standing up here talking about it when I don't feel I need all the credit for it. Because the workers are the ones who, who had us to do it. You know, and we had this, we bought this piece of land too, and now this is in the hands of the Zoological Society and the Manatee Conservation Trust. We found out about five, six years ago, the forestry had a problem, and not only forestry, but the courts had a problem in seizures, wild animal seizures, and there were thousands of animals being seized. End up in the court, and then the health ministry will say, put them to sleep, kill them. What we did, we, we convinced them that they give us the animals, let us test them, do the testing, see what problems there, there are any diseases, we check them, we cannot release them, but if they're free from it and they could live here, and when we say live here, indigenous of Trinidad, or part of the, 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 the fauna of Trinidad, we release it back. Those are not, we have to keep it until natural life. I4 International Fund for Animal Welfare is one of the international partners who bought in our plans, and some of the cages you see wrong here, they funded the cages. They funded the cages, but they, this, is, this is a sustainable place. When I say sustainable, on humanity trust, we, whoever we employ there, we are sustainable. We never take any government funding, anything. We generate our own money. We employ people up here. And sometimes we are the biggest private employer in Manzalena area. You know, but sometimes, apart from the government, we are the biggest employer. And what we are doing on this 400 acres estate, we put down 14,000 trees in the last 12 months, which is a lot of trees. It's a lot of trees. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of trees. And we are putting on trees from fruits to vegetables to, and if I talk about trees, I'm talking about dashing to yam, anything. We plant a lot of vegetables, a lot of ground provision, and we put on citrus, we plant a lot of trees that could sustain life. And we build one, two, three, four lakes so far. We look at the topography of the land, and we felt it will take 23 lakes that we could sustain life. And water sustain life. And during the dry season, you'll find even cobos will come in that pond to drink water when there's no water. Every animal will gravitate all around and come to drink water there. And, well, I know we talk, are talking a lot about animals, but I, this is the field that I chose. I, I am a sucker for poor people. And if I deal with poor people, I take all my money from my pocket anyhow. 
I feel sorry for them. So I felt 20 years ago is animals that I would deal with. And I dedicated my last 20 years. I hardly ever work anymore, my business run, but I am full time into the welfare of animals. And I should add that as we talk today, we have we bought a 56 foot vessel. Again, that is privately funded. And um, we are going to do map all the whales and dolphins in the water Trinity people. Uh, the boat is out there right now rebuilding. We're gonna map, we're gonna check, we're gonna do a survey of all the whales and dolphins and marine mammals in our waters. So we could identify. There's two fold body. There's a responsibility on us that we should know what animals we have out there in the seas around us and find somewhere protecting them. We've got to talk about protecting turtles and hundreds of turtles that kill every year in, in, in nets outside in the sea. So we are looking at ways that we could see what we got advice we could give. And we're looking at two fold. We submit proposal to TC that we figure out that. Whale watching is the, is the newest tourism thing in the world. And if Nadja will agree with me that it is the biggest new tourism that people are looking at whales. And we have whales in our waters. Off Shodo Island in the north coast, just north of Tobago. On the east coast, we have a captain here from a trawler. I know he's sitting on the other corner there. He fish on the east coast and he'll tell you how much whales they encounter all the time. And if we could develop that, we could use that and give it to communities that they could go out and start a whale watching industry. I mean, if you go to Dominica, it's a 25 million US a year income just a few years ago. I just came back from Santo Domingo. You go to Savan in Santo Domingo, and it's a $100 million US project a year. Just looking at whales and dolphins. And that could be something new that we could vent into tourism. And the society together, trust we have vent into that. The equipment for the boat is being funded partly by IFO. They deal with rescue of animals and and um, what I could say otherwise, I could take some questions, or if is there anything I missed out now, Joe, that I designated you to talk about? All right. I just want to be sure. I'm not a front line, I'm a backseat driver, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know if there's any questions people want to ask about here, or what we're doing, or what the thing is, I am willing to ask. No. <laughs> uh, well, Homo sapiens, no, we didn't. We not started rehabilitating them yet. But um, <laughs> we didn't. What we, what we mainly deal with wild animals. Like we have hundreds of requests for dogs and cats. But there have a lot of people dealing with dogs and cats. And we have two wild animal ambulance at the zoo. That almost every day we have people complain about some animal and problem, snake in their house, snake in the bedroom. We, the zoo, we have that response we handle that. And whenever you see a story about honeybee anyway, we have beekeepers who will leave. We follow the papers, we send them out to collect the bees. In fact, we mine bees on this estate. Most of the hives are given people, they call killer bees. Without bees, I don't know how you're going to pollinate most of the things that need to bear. You know? mm. Good afternoon. Um, first of all, I'd just like to commend you on the work that you've been doing here because I love animals and I love nature and I think we do need to preserve them. Um, just out of curiosity, do you have any endangered species on here? And if so? Well, the, so the species of what we have here and what is highly endangered in Trinidad is the manatee. Manatees are endangered. Caribbean, was a subspecies that live in the river swamp just over this hill and that is what got us involved in it. When we were looking for an environmental project with the Retreat Club and I first saw a manatee, I, I felt connected to it. And I felt that, okay, I, I must do a lot of crazy things in life. But what I want to be remembered for is my efforts to protect the manatee in the river swamp. What I could tell you now, the habitat is protected. It's an Adida covenant. They live on the estate that's owned by Manatee Trust. It's eight miles of beachfront on the estate. So we have thousands of turtles lay on the beach. Across the road, you see a Manzana Beach, which is owned by Manatee Trust. The manatees live right inside there. And they are highly endangered. There may be less than 5,000 left in the world. There might be 2,000 in Florida, and the rest is distributed Central and South America. Into Brazil, may have a subspecies, a smaller species. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at here, this place, because it's so close to the coastline, you have all the mammals that live in Trinidad. You have Ocelus right living on these hills, which is on top of our food chain here. And because it's so close to the coastline, you have all the type of birds you get there marine birds, you get the waterfowls, and you get the hill birds. So unlike if you go to another region and you see birds that live at a certain height, here you'll get birds from all different level on this place. Mm. Yes, good afternoon. Um, simple, quick question. Um, 
just would like to know how involved are the youths in here and, and at what level? I don't know. I, in my practice, I don't employ people who like me. And I don't, but the youths are involved. We have a lot of young people and we have a, we have a young staff. In fact, uh, what I could say in the last two years, we recruit a professional young staff. We have a biologist, a zoologist, a vet. They're all under the age of probably 13, Adra. Yeah, and we get dating. And in the case of youth, we have spin off of this Manatee Trust and the Rotary Club. We have what they call Zoo to You. Right? Zoo to You is a project that we started about three, four years ago. And every week or twice a week, we visit elementary school selling the idea, taking some pet and animals and selling the idea to the children. So we have that kind of youth cadre coming up. And today, youth, I, I don't think that you need to motivate youth and animals. We have, thank God, to the electronic age that you have direct TV or you have cable. They bring all these animal planet, all these shows directly into yours. So no longer we have to find a library or anything. Yeah. How much? Yeah, um, good afternoon. Um, Mr. Lachmidia, despite the uh, achievement, I must say I am disappointed that you don't rehabilitate uh, Homo sapiens. We have 41 of them in, um, in our parliament. Could you take them across in that rehabilitation area? Then? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, and that's a bit of victimhood eh, that uh, Lloyd talk about. We have the power, and um, if we don't organize, then we suck salt, as um, as Chikanal told us, who fully understand the plantation system. But um, yeah, um, what you, uh, uh, the question is: How many people you have employed? And the um, well, probably have, we have on this East Coast, we probably have about between thirty to forty people employed. Okay. Um. And productive, not not make work employment. Well, I should tell you something again. Um, unlike most people who work in agriculture, the people who work with us here in agriculture work eight hours a day, and we may be the only people in this country that have agriculture workers work eight hours a day. Now, what we have found a perfect formula for them on morning after we work them in the fields, and evening after they'll come and service equipment or build some of the shed or build some of the irrigation, do some of the things. So our workers up here work eight hours a day. They're the most pro productive agricultural workers you could get. Yeah. Unlike the workers in the rest of the country. Mm. Mm. Hi. I, I'm, a, <clears throat> I'm from Honduras in Central America. And I'm here with the Trinity yeah. College program. And I'm very interested in, in what you're doing here. And I, the question I have is, are you are you in touch with similar efforts, let's say in the Caribbean that is not either Anglo or Island Caribbean, let's say off off Central America or elsewhere? All right, through the zoo network, and I can say with the zoo, I must have visited, you have, what country are you from? Honduras, huh? Central America, Honduras. Honduras, oh yeah, I didn't go, I didn't visit Honduras in the last five years. But what we are doing, we, we started what they call the Caribbean Animal Welfare Association. and. For the last three years, we are networking with all the environmental groups in the countries, including part of the states that touches the Caribbean Sea. And that includes all the, I think it's 27, 28 of them we have. And we interlink, we share our experiences, we share our problems and whatnot. So we, we just started the organization. What we found difficult to do, and I just came back from a South, from a, from a Latin conference in Santo Domingo. You find that the English speaking countries keep a conference by themselves. And the Latin American conference countries keep a conference by themselves. And that has been going on for years and years. We started CAWA, which we're trying to include the both sides and get them involved. Yes, there is that link between all of them. And whenever you go to any conference, whether it's in North America or Central or South America, you always get people from either Latin America or some English speaking countries. I mean, we are aiming for that. We have representative each one of these countries that touches the Caribbean, which is 28 or 29, including me looking at Florida as one. We're looking at New Orleans or yeah. down the line, the country that touches the Caribbean Sea. Yeah. Yes, we have started that organization. If, if I just may follow up a little bit. Part of the reason I'm asking is not only because of that central question of yeah. that you mentioned that there's this yeah. fragmentation, but also in Honduras, for example, there's a small manatee community. I don't know. That is under enormous threat. Yeah. And, and as far as I know, it does not have the kind of work that's being done here. And I'm not sure that they may know of the kind of work that you're doing. Well, Manatee is under threat with two things there. Eh? Manatee is in threat with the rise of sea level is one. And Manatee is, 
a slow moving animal and a lot of places that is, is good meat i mean they eat it for years it's bad that they eat manatee but it, they, it's good the meat they, it's still in south america they use some for meat and in indigenous people but I, I i think what they should do is to get some group there and link if they, they have always have advice from u.s fish and wildlife or the Sirena institute based in gainesville florida which i was a beneficiary at i spent six months there training with them at manatees in, in florida in the early 90s and um they could give you a lot of information a lot of networking they may not give, get funding but it takes some you have to get people who could, as somebody said earlier, you have to get people who could generate their own fund. With our project up here, we didn't ask and go out and protest and call it government. We bought the estate, we planted it, and we paid for it. So the habitat is protected. I'm not saying that you might be able to do that where, where you are. But I suppose if you just have to get the people out there, and if they have the, that will and that burning desire to get it done, and well, you had to get some people who could follow you. Like Sunity might say, the, um, this morning she mentioned to me the, the people who just listen to me and agree everything I say. But you had to get people to, to buy in your idea. And you had to probably lobby. I you saw so Ronald Ramke soon here today. I didn't tell him, but I'm going to look for him sometime next month or the following month. You know, he's with a bank, I think. You know, So you have to look for people who are influential. When we wanted to buy the estate, we have a lot of people who were influential in the country. We spoke with them, and they bought in our idea. And they, they gave money to us. And I suppose there are people out there who will give money if you could convince them what you're doing is thing. And I think you could you could start that. I, I'm willing to come across there and look at it and see what it is, do what survey, see who you can link up with and whether we can network. We started a, a, a networking with Manatee people more than 15 years ago that we deal with people in Guyana, Suriname. We deal with some people in Venezuela. We deal with some in Brazil, in Belize, in Santo, um, Puerto Rico had some manatees and the people in Florida. These are the people that we visit their sites. But I, I didn't know of a population in Honduras. I think I saw that on a magazine recently about three or four years ago. Yeah, no, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye.